All right, welcome back to another tutorial. In the last tutorial, we spent some time getting this drop down selection filter set up. Uh, and in this tutorial, we are going to spend some time just improving the two filters that we have. So, adding the clear button so you can clear the filters, uh, maybe a bit more of an apparent active state as well. Uh, and then maybe we'll space them out and put them in. All right, and we need to be able to only have one open. So we need to figure out how to do that. And if we get to it, we might put them where this hello is rather than up above the table. So to start, I think, let's take a look at our select table filter, pill wrapper. One thing is I think we have this pill wrapper in two places. We do, we have it in both filters right now. So let's move that. Hmm. Well, because it's going to be for each of these filters in here, sorry. Maybe we just create a, um, file in here, like, table filter wrappers, and here we can import styled from styled components, and then we can grab this pill wrapper and export it from here. And then in both of these places, we can import the pillow wrapper from there. Get rid of that styled here as well. Get rid of that styled. And then what I wanted to do is when one of these filters is active. So in the fill wrapper, maybe we have an active prop. Oops. Let's just set it to true for the pill wrapper right now. Actually, I don't think this is the component that we want to style. This is the wrapper for both the card and the little button. The little button is when you open that panel. So this button right here is what we want to style. And this button is coming from NT. Let's see if NT has like an act. I mean, they probably have an active state. Uh, but we might be able to just utilize something in there. Check out the props on these. So one cheeky thing, well, let's see what ghost does actually, I'm kind of curious. So we go here and we say the quantity filter is ghost equals true. So this is the amount of students filter. And then we go back to the app. Oh no, it does look kind of weird. I think like we want like to set the active state on it or something. I wonder, can you manually set? This like the state, the HTML state. Actually, rather than trying to like 
make this super janky. Um, we're going to continue using the wrapper here, except we're going to import button from ID. And we're going to create a new one called like a uh, filter pill or something, which is going to be a styled button. And we'll get a prop in here to change the border color. So it's probably saying active is not declared. Yeah, it doesn't exist on the type. Can I do that? Let's Google this really quick. Style components prop TypeScript. Style components three and TypeScript three, what are we using? Style components five and TypeScript. Uh, four. Okay, so that's kind of old. Here we go, TypeScript. Here's some of the official docs. Types for styled components. Do we not have that already? Oops, I still have photos. Hmm. Nothing on props, which is lovely. Past props. My format on this was a little bit weird, wasn't it? Oh no, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm just uh, breaking it down. Check some more stack overflow questions. Using custom props. Here we go. So we just put it. After this. So props. There we go. And then if it's active, we're going to do something. Uh, otherwise, use the default. So maybe if it's active, let's just do red for now. The classic. So we go back here and we refresh. One of those buttons is still. Actually, we're not, we're not even using this component yet. So this is the filter pill, which is the button. Um, if we go back here and we import. From here we have our filter pill, which is replacing the button, which has a new active prop, active, perfect. So now our quantity table should have that border, awesome. And I think we'll roll one, we want to set the color as well. 
and we're just going to do the exact same thing. Check that. Awesome. And now we just need to determine, well, let's use that component here as well. Um, what was it? Filter pill, filter pill. And we'll use it here. And it's active. And now we just need to determine when it's active. So this one is active. If the applied option is not equal to an empty string. I'm just going to roll with that for now. Um, and with a quantity and value, like, can I do null here and then, let's say it's going to be a number or null. I think that's the right syntax. Uh, use state type or null. That's pretty much what I did. Argument of type number or null is not assignable to parameter of type. Oh, so now this could be null. Oh, that's annoying. Actually, if you do not a man, not a number here, is that type number? <laughs> so then you can say uh, this is active if the value is not equal to not a number. I can do is now. <laughs> if it's not a number, that means it's not active. So if it's not not, then it's active. Kind of weird to read, but if we go here, say is less than three. There we are. If we go here, there we are. So now we just need a little clear button on these, and we'll change the color too. But we're just gonna leave it for now in red. And I forgot to check what Stripe does. I think I have a, do I have a picture somewhere. There's a picture. Nothing with a X on it. I'm just going to assume that I know what I'm doing for now. And we'll figure it out later. So. We'll go on a new, or we're gonna put a little X in there, which we're gonna get from and Z icons. Icon, search for icons for X, cross, um, close. Maybe we'll do outline, that seems. And we're gonna to wanna to make that plus a bit stronger, otherwise the two buttons are gonna have equal weight. But if we import this close circle outlined, and we can put that here if uh, it's active. So uh, let's move this up here is filter active. Take that, put it here. And then we can use it here. And if the filter is active, then render this closed icon. All right, let's see what we get with that. Which one did I put it on? I don't remember, so we have to do both. Okay, I put it on this one. So there we go, you can see like these icons look of similar weight, so we'll need to up the one on that plus, but, or we can just hide it, perhaps. But, 
Anyway, so we want to do the same thing on the other one. This is where we're getting that duplication. So we might want to make these filters a bit more dry. And then we'll do another cause is filter active when the applied option um, is not equal to that. Move that here. Import the close circle outline from icons. Perfect. So now we have those X's and now they just need to actually do something. Oh, and one thing is, this is gonna be interesting actually. Filter fill is the button that you use to open the panel, but now we have like another close button, which is another button inside. So we're gonna to have to break this up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna start working with one filter rather than both until we get one working. Um, Cause it's not, Probably not a good idea to just put an on click event on an icon. This should be a button. Um, just, and do you have like invisible buttons or not invisible, but like just an icon with no nothing. An example of that. Where's the text one look like? Something like that. Let's see if we can use that. Hopefully this is just invisible. And then on this button, then we could do the on click. And all we're gonna do here is, set the applied option to its default, which is an empty string. And let's see what that looks like. This is gonna look really ugly, I believe. Do a little refresh, select this. Yeah, it's way over here, right? So it does work. Um, our styling just needs some work for sure. Uh, let's see if that's our best option. One thing is I bet not making it a block will help. And I think we're gonna want a wrapper around this. So we've got like the pill wrapper, but we have like the actual pill wrapper. This is more like a, filter wrapper. So we're gonna rename that then we're gonna go back here and we're actually gonna create a pill wrapper. Sure, it can be a span as well. This one is gonna be display flex, flex direction, row, align items, center, and between each item, there's gonna be a gap of two pixels. Let's try that for now. So now we wanna wrap both the filter pill, which is sort of like the option to open the menu. And we're also gonna wrap the closed circle outline if it's available. And we'll need to import that. And let's see what that looks like. Oops. Hmm, all right. This gets complicated still because we have our dashed button and that style needs to go around the whole element. So this is why I want to continue to see oh, multiple actions. This is what I want. Actions. So you got primary, secondary. What does the actions button do? Hmm. 
Why is it a the drop down dot button? If you need several buttons, we recommend that you use one primary plus n secondary. And if there are more than three options, you can group some of them into a drop down button. I don't think that's exactly what I'm thinking it is. I think you're just selecting one of these three. Okay. So not quite what I want. I want like a button that's split in two, right? Wait, how do they, how's that top one done? Oh, that's a radio group, it's not a button. Um, We might just have to custom roll this. Not seeing anything that's like has two on clicks that look like the same button, right? Because if we go back to this. Oh, wait. No. I need to, let, I'm going to pause that progress here because well, we might actually be able to change this on click action with the pill depending on if it's active or not but i'm not sure that's a bit weird if you like check click on the active text if that clears it which it does sound like immediately weird to me but let's just leave it for now and let's move this filter bar into that hello place Actually, the other thing we can do is you should only be able to open one of these at a time. So I think if we go back here, we've got our school table filter. I think this component should manage which filter is open. We go into one of these. So this one is what manages when the panel is open, but if we try and open a panel, then we need to close other panels. So we need to talk to the parent, which is the whole filter bar and say, can you close all of the panels that are open for other children? Which is a bit bizarre. But maybe, no, I think I'm gonna stop the video here and take a look at Stripe for some good usage patterns before we start coding. So short video today, but yeah, actually I'll probably continue. All right, just jumping back in here. So we were running into an issue where once we've selected a filter, we need a button to click on to clear the filter. And I looked around at Stripe and I can pull up a couple of screenshots here. It's a good one. And you can see here, once you have a value selected, you can actually click on like the right side of this to open it and continue selecting, or you can click this to close. So there's actually two buttons within here. There's like a button here and a button here. And then it's all surrounded by this like border, which isn't actually a button. Um, so that's what we're gonna have to do. If we go back here, we're just working with the select table filter. Let's see where we're at. So if we select an option and click apply. All right, we don't, it's also offset, it's super weird. Um, but yeah, let's just work on getting that, let's move this high. And let's work on getting the filter pill, which is the button to select things and the button that is active into two separate buttons, which they are right now, but two separate buttons that we can use. So 
I wonder if I can just make both of these text button size small. Uh, what sizes did Ant D have? Ant D buttons. I, we probably want the smallest size. They're small there. Okay, yeah, so small. Let's break this down to multiple lines as well. And then the pill wrapper is what's actually going to be what what's going to look like a button. So if we open up this, see we've got a few things here, but we may also want like a border one pixel uh, dashed gray. We'll just use gray for now. Um, and this will probably have some padding as well. Maybe let's just do like a little bit, uh, one pixel, two pixel, and then border radius, I don't know, 10 pixels. It can be huge because it's just going to be rounded. And let's see what we have there with that. It has no, are you sure? Oh, I just put it in the wrong spot. This is an icon, it comes from icons. Okay, so we've got this really long button here, which looks just awful. Uh, I'm going to go to our table filter. I'm just gonna remove the quantity one because it's causing some formatting. Just like, it's just hard to look at. We can close that, let's comment on that. Well, apparently this changes a lot of things. <laughs> Actually, you know what the easiest way to do this is? It's just a uh, false end. I wonder if it's gonna complain that like, don't use the word false, but then, okay. So that just ties it. So if we go back here, we select this and select one. Now we have our button here and our button here. Um, select table filter. So a couple things right away, filter pill. We no longer need this. I don't think we need like any of this active stuff. Oh, well, we might, let's keep it. Border isn't needed for sure. And let's put the close button on the left side. Oh, you can just pass in an icon, right? Okay. Um, and then if the filter is active, let's uh, not pass in an icon. Let's see what we have here. I've got an X and a plus, probably because, there we go. We can just close this button because we're not gonna have any text in it like that. All right, looking a little bit better. Um, and then get pill display, where is that? I think what we also want to do here is we want to get the name of the filter and do something like that. Perfect. And you can see the spacing on these buttons, like that's way too large. If we just link up this button to some functionality really quick, so yeah, that will set the applied option to nothing. So if we click this, it'll clear it. We select and it opens it back up. Let's get the spacing on this thing. Is the content gonna work? That should be fine. I don't see why we can't add that. So I do a spin on that. 
Um, okay. So now we go back here. I think we want to remove that hover stage or we want to make it so when you hover on this whole thing, you get that color. Um, what color is that? This is when we'll want to get into like using the ant D theme so that when we get into theming later, we can override these things. Add a hover class. Okay, so this is the pill wrapper. Maybe we can just do it all in here. Um, set and hover. So background color white. On hover, we'll do a background color light gray. And then the buttons hover all within here. Those background color it's going to be the same, or we can also just disable it. Let's see what that does. So the light gray is like way too much, but Oh, you can set it to none, okay. So buttons will have a none. And let's actually break this down. So we'll do that in there. But also the buttons in here. What's the padding on these guys right now? I'm going to compute it to see like the final results. Padding, 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 padding. All right, let's set the border radius to like 20 pixels. I don't think we need the padding on the top of that. Yeah, we're still getting that hover. Add the hover class. So I'm going to just overwrite the colors. Um, danger loading. API. I'll have to read the ant D documentation a little bit to see how you can overwrite some of these things. Cause like what we could do is you can do you can grab this class here. And you can overwrite it this way so you can see say button with that class. And that should work. See if I'm right? No, it's still not strong enough. I'm gonna have property value. There we go. So transparent would work. 
I was surprised the background color could be none. None seems like a weird value for that. Okay, and then we have an icon on the, in here. But I think to make the styling easier, Filters appeals a button, right? I'm gonna get rid of this filter pill item until we know what we're doing. So this is just a button. This is a button. There's gonna be no icon, but what I'm gonna do is we're actually gonna have three buttons here so those icons are gonna be separate buttons just the spacing's easier to handle and then this one have an icon uh, this doesn't have an active prop anymore import it as filter pill Do I use it in the other one? Probably do. You're going back to a button with no active prop. Uh, define what never used. That's back in here, yeah. All right, so now these are both buttons. There's actually two buttons here, but they both do the same thing. So it doesn't look like there's two. And then we just swap with that button with the icon. And what I'm going to want to do is also probably like remove the padding on this button so there's none. And then I'll add the padding back to the parent element. This might not apply because oh, it did. <clears throat> so now what I can do is I can put padding back here. I can say like maybe six pixels. And now this 24 pixels for the panel. Might want to be more like 40. or maybe 50. There we go. So that's starting to look a little bit better. Um, now I want to change so that the value is, has a color with it. So here we're actually going to return a span. And two spans. A span with two spans in them, uh, where one of them is going to be the name, like that, and then the other one is going to be like that. Get rid of this. Oh, and now we're saying we're actually going to return um, an element. Uh, there we go, put a name in there. Let's Google this here because I wonder what the type it wants for returning HTML from functions. I guess it's a function component, actually. It's the same as, also this is shorthand FC. With no props.
type element. Why is span type element? It's a website element here. React node? I feel like we might have those types actually. Is it really coming from React though? Other than like React types? All right, well that works for now. I might double it back and check that. But now, why did I do all that? All right, now we've got two spans here. So this is a span with a span, spam spam. And um, here, I'm gonna create a new wrapper called the uh, filter value, which is gonna be a styled span. It's actually gonna just be display flex uh, with the line item center. Import that here, and this should help any alignment issues we're having right here. Let's close. It might actually be fine. I think the spacing is weird because of that, maybe? That looks okay. And then, filter, we can say span last of type uh, color blue to highlight that that is the one, like that is a value that is selected, which is awesome. So now we can apply, we can clear that, we can add another one. And now I'm just gonna move this filter bar into that where that hello is and see if we can get it all formatted nicely there. I think that's my plan anyway. Yeah, let's do it. So if we go back to our school table filters, let's go to our school table. Can we take this and can we put it where the title is? We should be able to. Look at that, that looks a little bit better. We sort of had that hello there for a long time. So now you can open this, click apply, change it, clear it. Uh, clearing it doesn't rerun the filter, which is a good catch. So if we go here, um, set applied option is doing on apply. Okay, I think we need to change the method that's on that clear button. I'm gonna call a clear selection method, which isn't defined, but clear selection. It's going to do a couple of things. It's gonna return nothing. It's going to set the option that we have selected to that. And then it's going to call on apply.
and that should call the filter. So go here, elementary school, clear, go to middle school, apply, clear. Oh, it's bugging out on something. It's getting caught. Interesting. Um, oh, you know what's probably happening is setting, hmm, when is on apply called? So I'm going to click apply. So this isn't finishing before this is called and then this is called. So this is setting an applied option to the already applied option, which means we can only do on apply once set option is completed. Um, you're supposed to use use effects if you're waiting for a new state to finish. So we could maybe just do, no, that wouldn't make sense. Hmm. When we click apply, I'm just taking the option and applying it. When we click clear, we want to set the option. Honestly, maybe all we do is we copy some of this. I wouldn't be totally opposed to that. So setting, we're just gonna set apply option to nothing, set the filter, and then we can just apply filter with an empty string. Something like that. It's not the worst. So we have up here, we go elementary, we go middle school. Oh, we have two pages of school now. Or, Three, okay. And then we can click middle school, we can clear it. Yeah, that seems fine. I don't mind having like a little bit of duplicated code for those two methods. But that's awesome. So now we have a working selection filter that you can, you can select things, you can clear it, and it stays active, or you can see which uh, selections you've chosen. So I think I'm gonna call this video here. And then in the next one, we'll add back our quantity filter and we'll fix that issue where we have like two panels that are opening and we'll go on from there. So thanks for tuning in and I'll catch y'all in the next one.